Hello students, we'll discuss about various steps involved in communication research. There are several steps from the beginning till the end. We begin with identification of problem and come to an end only after writing the report on the whole exercise. And this is these steps are not only important for communication research. In fact, these steps are part of any kind of research activities. And therefore, the students should not only remember those steps, but they should keep this in mind. We begin with identification of problem and come to an end only after we write, write a complete and detailed report about the whole exercise. And what is uh, uh, another important point about this is that each and every steps involved in communication research is not only interlinked but all these steps are equally important and there is a logic behind the relation between the first step and the second and then uh, between the second and the third or, and, and similarly several other uh, steps interrelated uh, between each other. So therefore, please keep this in mind and have a look of those steps. These are the steps involved in communication research. These are identification of research problem, review of literature, hypothesis building, research design, data collection, data processing, tabulation analysis, drawing tentative conclusion, and final is the report writing. But uh, I would like to make one point very clearly at the outset that this is not the generally accepted formula. Somebody might club together everything related to data in one subcategory. But I have decided to do like this precisely because of the fact that I wanted to make everything abundantly clear to the students. So we'll now move on to the next, uh, I mean, section. And in that, will look into each and every uh, steps in greater detail. So the first is identification of research problem. As I said, what is research problem to begin with? Research problem is nothing but the topic of the research. It is the subject under study. It is the issues under a study. So the student should not get confused by this term research problem. When somebody says that it is, what is research problem? He or she should mean that he or she is talking of the topic of the research, number one. The second thing and uh, important uh, thing about it is that how do we decide about it? How do you decide that we have to do research on this particular problem? So there are several reasons behind. There are several factors that helps, and helps us in taking a decision on this particular issue. This is self-awareness, self, how self-awareness comes into being. See, we participate in seminar, we uh, participate in discussion and we participate in debate with our friends, with, with teachers in the college and outside. And those things sometimes we create in our mind that some particular issue is important and we should read it properly or study it properly. So this is one uh, factor. The second important factor that helps us in identifying research problem is news reports. News report is one of very important source of, uh, you see, uh, 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 information in the country and outside. And by reading newspapers, we come, might come across a issue which, uh, which is uh, relevant for the country, for the world, for the uh, people and we take a decision that let's have have a proper understanding of this uh, phenomena. Similarly, sometimes some some sudden development like COVID uh, right now, this also creates a situation when where somebody I mean is compelled to uh, study uh, this. Similarly, some strike some sometimes somebody whom you know may ask you or suggest you to do research on that particular topic. So these are the factors that help us in deciding our uh, topic. We would like to understand this with the help of this COVID uh, phenomena. Recently, there was a lockdown in this country and following that, there was a massive 
reverse migration to the village. People from uh, cities, though they are working in the cities, they all, all of a sudden they found themselves unemployed and they decided to go their village. And now the thing is, the peop- there may be some kind of a social tension. This is not a simple, uh, simple thing. You see, in a state like Bihar, it is estimated that altogether 32 lakhs of people have gone back uh, to their home state, Bihar. So, if this kind of a massive reverse migration go to the village, there has to be some kind of a tension. And people are already reporting about it. That those who are going to the uh, village, they would look for employment. And uh, again, there would be a kind of a pressure on Manrega. Similarly, on other... Uh, resources available in the village. So those who are already involved in this kind of employment, they might feel threatened. So that is the area of tension that might, I mean, we we can, we should like to uh, study. The second thing is a kind of tension that might emerge on the level of uh, conflict related to caste and traditional, uh, you see, values. People coming back to villages from uh, cities, they have their exposes in the c- cities and they are open about it. They they have forgotten their caste, but once they come back to their village, they will have to face same old story of caste and creed and uh, see religion. So again, there could be a kind of a tension. So we would like to study this. So how, this is how we select our, uh, uh, see, uh, research problem. Then the second important uh, step and that is very important is review of literature. Review of literature as I said in the beginning, not only review of literature, in fact each and every steps involved in communication research is important. Review of literature is important because it enhances our knowledge, number one. And the second important thing about it is that it leads to formulation of hypothesis because hypo, which is the foundation stone which is the foundation of the entire research activity so what is the importance of review of literature first of all it it enhances our knowledge and second it helps us in generating hypothesis uh, what kind of uh, uh, literature we review we review already published literature the published articles published books on on uh, the subject under study and kind of relevant documents. And the second thing that what, uh, why should, uh, I mean, why do we do review literature? This I have made it uh, clear in the beginning that it uh, helps in knowledge of enhancement and leads to hypothesis generation. Now coming to the next uh, step that is hypothesis, hypothesis building, we'll have to uh, uh, begin with defining what, what is hypothesis or making it evidently clear to the students. Hypothesis is a kind of a presumption. You assume something. Before going into the details, you assume something. For example, as I assumed in the case of a migrant reverse migration and uh, uh, migrant workers going to the village, I assume or presume that this kind of reverse migration might lead to some kind of a tension in the village. This is my presumption. It may be wrong. Every village cannot have this kind of uh, uh, see tension. But this is my presumption. So the first thing is that this is hypothesis is a presumption. And the second feature of this is that it is a kind, it looks for a casual explanation. The relation kind, a relationship between cause and effect. So this Migrants, reverse migration is creating a uh, kind of a social tension in the village. The reverse migration is the cause and effect is the social tension in the village. This is the second aspect of hypothesis. And third is the testing. If this kind of presumption it emerges in our mind, we need to not only presume, we need to test in the villages, in the, in the field. Therefore, whenever uh, somebody asks you to define hypothesis, you must mention these three things, that it is a kind of presumption or assumption regarding a kind of a cause and effect relationship between two phenomena that needs to be tested in the field. If you miss one point, your, your definition will be incomplete. And testing is must, therefore. And 
uh, in the next lecture, we'll discuss hypothesis separately. We'll be discussing hypothesis separately because hypothesis is a very important issue in uh, in, in research uh, activities. So the next thing is how, as I said in the beginning, that is the foundation of entire research projects. Because if you don't have, if you don't develop good hypothesis, you you will not do. You cannot do a good research. Uh, you see, uh, 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 proper research. So this is how it is important. You for a good research, for, for a proper research, for uh, coming to the proper and uh, you see scientific conclusion, you need to have a proper hypothesis. There, here lies the importance of hypothesis. The next st step is research design. Once we decide what is our hypothesis, we we need to go to the field. As I said in the uh, earlier, that once, what is the third aspect of uh, hypothesis? That you need to test it in the field. So once you develop your hypothesis, you need to go to the field. But before you go to the field, you need to have a proper research design. What is research design? Research design is nothing but a pre-plan of the whole project. It is the map. It is the road map of the whole research activities. What kind of area you need to select for your uh, you see, field study? What kind of sample size you must have? What is the uh, time frame uh, involved in uh, entire research activities? Similarly, what kind of uh, technique you need to have for data collection? Similarly, what kind of data you require for your uh, see subject under study? If you are, if you want to study the social tension likely to be created by reverse migration, what kind of data you need to have, what kind of technique you need to have, you need to have questionnaire or uh, you see, uh, uh, you see uh, uh, a schedule or you need to go for interview or you, you just go for, you need to just go for observation. This you need to have in mind in detail beforehand, before you move to the field. So this is what it is. It is a basically pre-plan of the whole project. Then the next question is, what is the importance of research design? Because, I mean, uh, uh, we need to understand this, uh, the importance of this. This is, research design is important because it saves times, it saves money, and more important than these two things that it protects you from deviation. You don't, you are focused, you, you don't deviate. You are you are to the you are you are, you are attacking your target. So this is what the purpose of the research design. After you, you see formulate a proper research design, you would like to go to the field for data collection. Now, so far as data collection is important, I would like to make it uh, clear again at this juncture that you see you must have heard of this. It is said that data speaks for itself. And data itself in itself is literature. So there, there are experts who only after a glance, after a look of the data given in the table or in the graph or in the, uh, see, in whatever form, they can tell you the entire story. And therefore, while going for data collection, one should be very careful uh, in his or her approach. First of all, the first important thing one needs to in, in, in his or her mind is that he or she must go for a preliminary assessment and the contest be the area. The, the area you have selected for data collection, you must have a preliminary assessment of its a geographical location, the kind of people living there, and uh, uh, what kind of uh, issues are there in that area. Then, similarly, you, you should also uh, get uh, should be familiar with the area uh, 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 so that you could develop a kind of repo, repo building the respondent. So in this context, we would like to uh, uh, explain what is repo building and what is respondents. Respondents are those people to whom you are going to ask questions and they will be re answering your questions. If you are going to speak to the migrant workers, they will be the, your respondents. And what is repo building? Repo building is a kind of intimacy, kind of a, a good relation, uh, uh, intimate relation with those people that you will have to convince that. 
them that you have come for some research problem and you are not going to uh, you see disclose any secret about their family life their background or where they were working in the cities and why they have come back so you will have to convince them then only they come up they'll they'll answer your question so this is what uh, uh, what is rapo building and the respondent please keep this in, these two words in in your mind because they might uh, in examination they might ask you such type of things for writing a notes on these uh, topics then uh, one more thing and which is very important is selecting relevant data that is as i said in the beginning that data speaks for itself and data in itself is a literature so you you need to have that kind of you see uh, bent of mind that the kind of problem you are going to study that requires a particular kind of a data so whenever you are talking to your respondent you need to ask those kind of questions so that you could know those uh, uh, know those aspect or those things that you are interested in so and therefore you need to design your questionnaire or schedule from that angle so therefore these are the important issue then once you collect your data the next step is data processing tabulation analysis again this is a huge exercise a very lengthy exercise and there was a time when there was no computer uh, it was a very uh, tough job once you collect your data and if if the uh, number of respondent is very i mean if your sample size is uh, big uh, that will uh, require more time and therefore it is a very as i said it's a very complex exercise and you need to be very you see meticulous and particular about it how to handle your data that you have collected from the field you need to go for a proper processing and then tabulation and once you do proper processing and tabulation the analysis will emerge automatically you see once you arrange your data in proper format it will speak, it will start talking to you it will start giving you information and therefore i i have mentioned it that efficient data processing and analysis give better results and this entire thing requires efficient experts and you need to develop yourself in this direction the, again the last the last section is once you uh, see uh, analyze your data and uh, see uh, do certain kind of analysis then certain conclusions start emerging and that you need to identify and you do a uh, conclusion but uh, i must tell you this thing that it, so far as social science is concerned you need to be very particular about it always always never go for a final saying you should always go for a tentative conclusion drawing tentative as i said so please keep this in mind tentative because social science as i said in my first uh, lecture that social science has a drawback despite all development def despite emphasis on use of scientific method in social sciences uh, you see uh, subject like communication research there is a handicap with uh, ourselves uh, with our subjects because we study social phenomena which is fluid unlike natural phenomena and therefore our we cannot draw draw final conclusion we should go for a tentative conclusion so that we could be very very scientific in our approach you see if there is a, if, if there is a uh, error in our uh, uh, you see understanding we could correct it and the second important thing is this on this uh, account is that we should try to keep ourselves with a, 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 a away from the biases we must not be biased by any our uh, you see personal background or our educational background or our family background and we should be uh, very objective i mean objective to the best of our i mean uh, knowledge and you see precise and to the point conclusions are always better it 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 gives better uh, you see impression and therefore these are the important points that one should 
keep in mind while drawing conclusion so this was the uh, i mean the second but last section and last but not the least is the job of report writing which is again a huge huge project and report writing would involve details of everything right from selection of topic to a uh, review of literature to hypothesis building to research design and research design your methodology and method selection of to- uh, technique kind of data collections the your experiences in the field and then uh, every kind of thing and then final conclusion the tentative conclusion that you have drawn similarly while writing a report you need to uh, uh, ra- mention in the beginning the acknowledgement if your research work has been sponsored by some agency you need to uh, mention about that you need to acknowledge those who have helped you in in uh, doing your, your research so this is acknowledgement part first part should be the cover uh, of the report then second should be the uh, this acknowledgement then introduction and then the whole report and after the you complete writing your report there should be a you a, a sort of a section of uh, you see maybe appendix and then bibliography bibliography will tell you later but bibliography a kind of a collections of the uh, source material you have consulted and that is arranged alphabetically similarly appendix is a kind of some special report that you like to attach with your report some letters some important relevant interview that you need to attend so this is what report writing is therefore these are the important steps that you keep in mind thank you so much